Hello and welcome to Design Patterns. Today we are going to talk about the factory. So what is the factory? Especially um, it's called the factory method specifically. The idea of the factory method is to delegate the creation of objects to someone else. How can this look like? So we want to create a concrete product, but we don't want to bind our client directly to this object type. So we create an interface product and we create a, a factory method or a template to create this, this product, but just the interface. And then we derive from this, from this creator, a concrete creator, a concrete um, factory object, which has a factory method, which actually creates this concrete product. So the context of the factory method is, um, we want to create an object whose class is not known until runtime. So at compile time, we don't know actually which um, actual class will fulfill this role or this interface. So how can we do this? The forces are, actually we don't care which object is created as long as it provides the same interface, the same functionality as we want to have. Then the next thing is sometimes we can't anticipate which class we want to create. So um, in dynamic cases, Sometimes um, during runtime it is chosen which actual class we want to use. So we want to shift the decision which class to create to someone else. And the solution to this is we define an interface with the needed capabilities. So what do we want to, to um, what do we require from our pro product, from our object? Then we define some means to create the actual object. So a method somewhere. And then we let, we actually have an implementation of the object or of this interface. So the consequences are finally the framework code and application code are isolated. We are flexible now. So we can change the object during runtime. We don't need to know it during compile time. We have lesser dependencies because we only depend upon the interface. Then we connect parallel class hierarchies. So our application code can develop independently to the object code. And also the interface could develop independently. We have the coupling of implementation and usage. So um, someone else can implement the actual object as long as it fulfills the interface and we just use the defined interface. We don't know which object is behind this. The actual instances are abstracted away, so actually we don't know and we don't um, we don't can find out which actual instance is behind this. A problem is that the constructor is hidden. So uh, if the constructor of the object changes, also our uh, factory method should change. The other problem is maybe not everything, not every uh, capability of the constructor is provided by the factory method. And we need an additional interface abstraction layer. Yeah, of course, because otherwise we couldn't implement this. So what are the issues here? First of all, the naming convention. Sometimes it's already defined, but here, um, how should we name our factory method that the intent is clear? For example, we could, it co we could call it just yeah, object factory or XYZ factory or some some name with the subname of factory. How do we provide parameters? So should we provide the same parameters as the constructor of the object 
What if we need something more? So if we have some configuration which is done directly after construction, what is uh, if the constructor changes? Um, should we define an interface for everything? So duct typing, or should we define the universal GOT interface which provides everything? Um, how can we avoid direct construction? Because um, with factor method you have some safety layer, some abstraction layer in between the actual object construction and the usage, uh, but you still can create the object by yourself and then everything is for vain. So maybe you want to hide the constructor of the actual object, but then the question is, how should we create it? So maybe provide a, a creation method which relies on, on friend, on the friend mechanism or give the object itself a factory method, which is kind of a constructor, but not exactly, because you have more control. And then what about an abstract creator versus a concrete creator? So a creator which already has a default implementation, but subclasses can override this, versus the abstract creator where it's just an interface and some classes must implement everything. So this is very often with uh, the, the classical design patterns. How much should you already provide and how much should you should left open for the developer? So to finish with the factory method, here we could say, yeah, toll, an andra machts. So um, someone else, you want to delegate the creation of objects to someone else. Okay, thank you very much and have a nice day.